Welcome to AutoCAD Day 2. Here we're going to start to talk about uh, defining positions, but before we do, let's go ahead and set up our screen the way it should be. So we're going to go up to Format and set our units to two points after the decimal. And we're going to double check that our drawing limits are at the default, which should be the bottom left at 0, 0, and the top right at 12, 9. And remember, to be able to see all of that on your screen, you need to click on View, Zoom, and Zoom All. Okay, now if I move it just a little bit, I'll see there's my origin at 0, 0. And up here on the top right should be about 12, 8, 12, 9. Now we're going to talk about defining positions, and there are five main methods for doing this. Uh, we're going to use line as an example. The first method is called the interactive method, and this is what we talked about yesterday. Use your cursor to make a selection on the screen of where you want the first and second point to be. The second method, and again we'll use line as our example, is called the absolute coordinate method. Here we use the origin as a reference point for anything we type in. This would be similar to what you do in geometry. So let's say I want to start at point 2 comma 2. It puts a point right there. And let's say I don't want to change anything on my x-axis. I'll make it 2 comma 3. And I'll use my left mouse button to click. And you'll notice that this point here should be right at 2, 3 in the bottom left corner of my screen. Okay, this is good if you already have everything mapped out. You know exactly where things should be. If you don't, then you might want to go back and consider using relative rectangular coordinates. In this form, you're going to use the at symbol, and it's going to give you a coordinate relative to the last point that you made. So my last point was here at 2, 3. I want to go over 1, and let's say I want to go up 1. Instead of typing in that I want to be at 3, 4, I'm going to type at, the at symbol, 1, comma, 1, and hit enter. Okay, now if you notice in the bottom left corner, this is at 3, 4, but I typed 1, 1. So that is what relative rectangular coordinates are. Relative polar coordinates is the fourth method. In this, you're going to still use the at symbol, but you're typing in a distance and the angle. So let's say from here, I want to go up 3. All right, so I'm going to still type in my at symbol. Let's shift 2. And I want it to go up 3 from where I was before. But for the angle, I'm just going to hit tab. I want the angle to be 90. Now, typically, you wouldn't use uh, 90 as an angle. This would be much more useful if you're using something like 30 or 60, something that'd be harder to uh, judge what the distance might be. But for our example, we'll just use at 3 comma 90 and here we went up exactly 90 degrees our first point was down here somewhere at 3 4 this should be at 3 7 and if you look in the bottom left corner there it is uh, the last method we're talking about is the direct distance entry method here you specify a second point by m first moving the cursor to the indicated direction and then entering a distance so all that means is that I move my cursor over. Right, I know I want it to go in this general direction, and let's say I want it to go 2 in that direction. I just type in the number 2 and hit Enter. Okay, and it traces exactly where I told my cursor to be. If I want it to follow, you'll notice that my cursor does snap to a point. If you want it to follow a 90 degree angle, so let's say this time I want it to go down, uh, we'll call it 4. And there's extended my line down 4. I don't have to type in a Y value. I don't have to type in any kind of negative value. And I'm just using the Enter button. Okay, those are the four 
defining positions. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop this tutorial and we'll start up another one in just a second.